We're going to be talking foot rot. Important conversation. Doc. David. <laughs> how are you? I'm very well. Very, very well. And Fantastic. you? Fantastic. I'm in good spirits. Great. And in good health, too. Yeah. So Lovely. I'm really, I'm really happy. <laughs> yes. Now, ah, foot rot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, okay, so when I was back in high school, <laughs> um, you know, people take out their shoes mm -hmm. and the whole room mm -hmm. is consumed with an aroma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the stench. Yeah. From one person's shoes. You can knock all the mosquitoes out. <laughs> it's so it's not easy. <laughs> How bad is this problem of foot rot? And is it the same thing as athlete's foot? So, well, technically, it's not the same thing because okay. athlete's foot is uh, specific. It's a fungal infection, okay. you know. <laughs> mm. uh, whilst foot rot is, is, it can encompass athlete's foot as well, okay. but it can also um, have other, other, should I say, other pathogens, kinds of, other, yeah, other kinds yeah. of germs as well mm. involved. You know, when we, when we talk about athlete's foot specifically, it's a it's fungal, a fungal infection. infection. Okay. Yes. You okay. know, of the foot, mm. you know, so, so, but basically it's, 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 it's the causes, it's the, the, how do I put it, the, the situations that would precipitate these, these, these infections are all about the same. Okay. You know, so we use them, we tend to use them interchangeably. Okay. So is the foot actually getting rotten? <laughs> well, technically again, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so you don't, you don't want it to go to the, the, to the extreme, mm. you know, so it's called foot rot because it's actually, um, you know, the germs are eating away at the foot. Oh, okay. And so we don't want that to, we don't okay. want that to pertain, so mm. we need to deal with it as soon as possible. Mm. And interestingly, you, you, you don't necessarily need to come to hospital to deal with it. Okay. You know, it's easily, it's quite easily preventable, mm. you know, so it shouldn't progress to that level. Um, but, but, there's a huge but okay people with diabetes are at risk of having severe complications as a result of this very 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 small thing called foot rot hmm. in fact as many people have had their legs amputated because of foot rot due to the underlying wow. diabetes okay you know so it's something that even though we we, we don't respect it mm. it can cause significant no um, morbidity mm. you know should you and should you encounter it in the in the in the event that you are diabetic poorly controlled diabetes for trying to remember my biochem um <laughs> is it because there's excess sugar for the pathogens to feed on. Yes, yes, that's that's, what that's it is. primarily what. It, okay. Okay, so it's two, it's two things, and both of them are the result of excess sugar. Mm. Now, in, when your diabetes is very poorly <coughs> controlled, mm. the sugar at some point begins to get deposited under your skin. Okay. Oh. Oh yes. Oh wow. You know. Now, when okay. the sugar is deposited under the skin, it causes one of two things. Mm. One is that it actually it begins to um, destroy the nerve endings. Okay. You know, and so you are, the, the feeling, your, your sensation is reduced, is dulled. Okay. You know, and so because of that dull sensation, you don't feel pain. Mm. In fact, you don't even feel anything at all. So I'm I sure see. you've had diabe diabetics who yes. don't feel their, 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 their the foot. So even if they are stepping yes. on a nail, they don't even know they are stepping on a nail. Yeah. You know, if they are stepping on a hot charcoal, they are not aware. Okay. You know, it's also the same reason why they become impotent if it's poorly oh, controlled. I because see. the nerves around that area They've is not, it, exactly. So that's number one. Then number two. Because the sugar is present under the skin, mm. once there's a small cut, once you develop foot rot, which many of us would rec recover from without any, any issue, yeah. the, the excess sugar presents a good, a rich medium for the bacteria and the fungi to actually grow. Mm. So they grow exponentially. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we, because the, the, the individual is not feeling pain, mm. you know, if you have foot rot, if you have any issue with your foot, you'd feel pain. But now the nerves are dead in quotes, so mm. they, don't, they don't feel pain. So they don't notice that there's any problem going on under, in, 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 on the foot. I see. Until somebody actually looks at it and sees that there's a problem okay. here. You know, so most of the time, by the time anybody actually detects that there's, a, there's foot rot down there, mm. it has become something else. Mm. And so that is how come um, people have had their, 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 their legs amputated as a result of this, this issue. You know, and it's, 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 it's very disheartening. In fact, diabetes is the number, number two most common cause for amputation, mm. you know, non-traumatic mm. amputation. And it's mm. really, really upsetting. <laughs> wow. So um, if, if, okay, so when you look at a population, mm -hmm. any general population, how prevalent is this? 
Oh, I dare say in the in this room, about ninety percent of all of all the people in this room have had food fraud in the, in the past year. Wow. <laughs> so okay, it's, so it's, it's, it's very very prevalent. common. It's quite common. Mm. Yes, yeah, quite common, especially in our environment. You know, mm. because um, and that's a stepping up with all fung all fungal infections. Humidity is a, is a major major factor in 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 the spread or mm. should in the, how the, in flourishing how they flourish. Okay, you know, and for us we have the sun throughout the year. It's been raining recently, but you still feel the heat. Yeah, you know, so you wear you wear shoes, especially closed closed shoes. You know, you wear socks, and and then the, you sweat. A lot of us yeah. sweat quite profusely in, on on our, on, our, on our legs. So there's a lot of humidity. There's a lot of moisture okay. in the shoe, okay. and we are working from from 8 a.m. So to if you add traffic, you are probably working from from 6 a.m. all the way mm. to 10 p.m. Yeah. So that's a long time for fungi to actually grow. Okay. And many of us are not. We don't have the luxury of changing our footwear um, every day for mm. for that matter. We wear the same footwear throughout the throughout yeah. the week. Yeah. And so we are interacting with the fungi in the mm. shoe mm. all through the week. And so they they get access to all the all the the little little um, cracks mm. in the in in the foot, mm. and then they flourish. They flourish and be get and get into what mm. what it is that um, the, that least foods we are we are discussing. Mm. Okay. So our our, our um, environment makes it a very makes it pre quite prevalent. Mm. You know. Okay. <laughs> now I have this thing, um, and I don't know if it's actually a solution in terms of the science of it. Okay. But I re I noticed that if I tend to oil my feet, okay, um, frequently. Mm -hmm. Okay, it. I keep it at bay. Now, <laughs> is there a science to this? When I oil my feet, I get I get issues. Really? <laughs> yes. Oh, and so it's not it's not a one size fits all. Okay. Basically, what we need to do is you need to keep your feet as dry as possible. Mm. But let me also let me back it up a bit. Having at least foot is not a, it, it, it does not put any question mark on how clean you are. It's not mm. a cleanliness matter, okay. you know, because you can wash your feet every hour for, mm. for, for, mm. for uh, every hour and still develop at least foot. Okay, it's a function of how dry you are keeping your feet. Mm. You know, so if you if, if you wash your feet and you don't dry it well enough, and then you slip it into the socks, mm. and then you you put it you, okay. you, you wear shoe, you are creating a situation it's where an environment. Yeah. an environment where the virus is going to grow. Mm. You know, and then also. Because many, like I said, because we don't change our footwear often, we don't, we don't, we, are, we don't give the footwear uh, time to be to air out, to dry out, mm. you know. And so one, one, obviously, let, let me just dovetail into how to deal with this issue. One way to deal with foot rot is to air out your your footwear, if yeah. possible, leave them in the sun. You know, the sun is very powerful in handling um, um, fungi actually, mm. and we see that even in our discussion on candidiasis, candidiasis and all the other fungal infections, the sun does wonders. So if you can actually air out your footwear, it can reduce the prevalence. Some people also use powder. You know, powder tends to absorb um, absorb moisture. Okay. So if you know if you if you know that you sweat a lot in your feet, it will be good if you can powder that powder your feet to help absorb the moisture. Or better still, don't wear closed footwear. You know, keep a sandals are a, a great great example because sandals yeah. obviously are not closed, so a, a lot of air passes through. Okay. So you're not going to sweat as much. You know, so if you can actually um, wear sandals where you are going, choose to wear sandals. That is, if you know that you sweat excessively excessively. Um, in your feet. Not everybody has this problem of sweating in the feet. A lot of us are able to go without um, significant sweat. If you are like that, fine, you know. But if you know that you sweat a lot, even if you have to wear socks, don't wear thick socks because they will then absorb the sweat and hold it for mm. a longer period. You know, mm. they, so don't wear thick socks, you know. Or if now, nowadays it's fashionable to even not, not wear socks at, not so, to at wear all. Socks, so, just, yeah. so just get the appropriate fo footwear that does not need you, need you to wear socks. Mm. But you need to also have multiple footwears. At least one, I mean, a two or three will be fine. So that if you wore one today, mm. you can let it air out be, uh, and then wear a different one tomorrow because okay. that break can help, we'll you know, dry, dry the out the then, shoe. Exactly, very, very important. Mm. <laughs> wow. Now, now, I've seen this thing, and when you were talking about the, the fact that it's become fashionable not to wear shoes, I've, but I've seen people wear dress shoes mm -hmm. without socks. Now, <laughs> in terms of uh, keeping the fungal activity at bay, how, how is that going to make it worse or better? I mean, I, I so, imagine it to be worse. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not a fashion expert, but I mean... <laughs> I think that every 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 
equipment mm. it, it's designed for a particular purpose okay you know and so if you actually pick a shoe a dress shoe like you call it and you check the, the material that was used to do the the inside layer mm. and if you compare this shoe to another shoe which is meant to be worn without socks and you compare the material used for the inside layer you notice differences if you actually wore at least for me if i actually wore a dress shoe without socks i noticed that i actually sweat more because of the material that was used for the in, inside of that dress shoe versus a shoe that um, was made for um sockless wearing okay you know so if you wore a dress shoe without socks and it causes you to actually sweat more you're actually putting yourself at risk because again you're going to keep your leg in this shoe for for the entire work day mm. you know so you are yeah you're exposing yourself to the fun you see the thing about fungus is that you you you, you they are there there's fungi in the air as we are sitting here so they okay. are all, all around us mm. so they are settling in all all our things in our shoes on our clothing and in everything that we have at, at i mean around us and so once you make the environment conducive for them to grow they will grow mm. and so once you wear that shoe and you start sweating in there the fungal is already inside the shoe waiting for the <laughs> right environment you know they they, they they form spores yeah okay and these spores are resistant they can last they forever. can last forever there yeah. could be a fire in here and the spore is cool mm. and hey you know but once you present the right environment the moisture and the humidity it will begin it will to grow okay so the fungi is already in the shoe okay so once you wear that shoe and you start sweating mm. that's perfect environment they start to grow okay so you need to make sure that you are not present you are not you are not providing an environment for them to grow and mm. propagate then you protect yourself from the from the um at least foot yeah now the another thing about this thing is that if you then do if you do develop the at least foot and we we you don't recover or or how it becomes a bit more severe there's a super infection and when you say super infection it doesn't mean some some giant bacteria or anything but it just means that a different kind of germ can also it's taking advantage it's taking advantage of the oh. fact that somebody has already made a crack okay. so let me go and, and also enjoy okay. the, the, the freedom okay you know so now the fungi may have started the at least foot then the bacteria now gets involved mm. you know and that is when you might you, 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 the infection can spread to other parts of the body mm. and cause more problems okay you know we have questions that are coming already um <laughs> belinda <laughs> in tissue estate says good morning david my mother has had this challenge since forever uh, she's used different creams and medicines prescribed by doctors but the situation remains the same e well um <clears throat> I can I can I can understand where she's coming from. You see, because uh, dealing with fungal infections can be a, a bit of a headache. Yeah. You know. But what we need to understand is that not all doctors can treat these issues. Okay. So if you've been to a general practitioner once, twice, and they are not able to handle it, you need to graduate to a dermatologist. Okay. People who are actually responsible for this 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 um, area. Yeah. And if the dermatologists are not able to handle, in fact, there's actually a whole um, um uh, what's it called group of doctors who specialize in the foot. We don't have a lot of them in Ghana. Okay. They are called podiatrists. You okay. know, so, and so if, if, if the dermatologist is unable to handle it, then you'd have to go and see, see a, a foot podiatrist. specialist. Okay. You know, in Ghana, we have the orthopedics, the dermatologists, and the physicians, they, they, they all, all sort of chip in. Yeah. You know, but there's actually a dedicated doctor for the foot. For <laughs> you know, mm. we don't, like I said, we don't have uh, enough of them mm. in this country, so you might, you might struggle to find them specifically, but um, some other special specialists chip in to, to sort of cover the Okay. That's um, area. Those areas. Yes. Okay. okay. Another question: What's the difference between foot odor and foot rot, or is it the same thing? This is Henry from Tema. It can be. It can be the same thing, but um, it can also be different in the sense that foot odor can be caused by different things. You know, foot odor can be caused by so many different things. However, foot rot can also lead to foot odor. Mm. You know, uh, foot odor uh, it could be a, a sign of how clean you are keeping you are keeping your foot. Yeah. Because I mean, we we know guys who never change their socks for like for for months. They yeah. wear the same socks. Obviously, yeah. that's going to present a problem. Mm. You know. But if you if you are, if you've been changing your socks regularly and you still have an issue with foot odor, it might be something else. And so it's important that you have it checked out. You know, generally speaking, there are people who have stronger sense. Of I mean, body, body sense yeah. than, the, than the rest of us. And so if you are one such person, it would not be unusual to have foot odor as well. You know, so know yourself and know what your peculiarities are and then find the appropriate mm. interventions to help, mm. you know, manage the situation. Okay. So let's do the, um, let's talk about uh, just general um, hygiene and general um, keeping, you know, of, um, of, of ourselves um, in terms of our feet, feet health, feet um, hygiene. If you find yourself in, let's say, 
an area that tends to be mm. more humid than normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your general practices, if I was going to bed, for example, would you suggest that I have some powder, that I dry my feet? What are some of the, 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 the things that we can do practically to just make sure that we, you know, we help ourselves, as it were? Before you, before you answer that, uh, kindly use the hashtag breakfast daily to hear, for us to hear what you're thinking. The WhatsApp line is 0550585832. If you happen to be outside Ghana, can you prefix that number with plus two, three, three? Doctor is here to help us answer these questions. Well, generally, I mean, you don't necessarily need to do um, anything significantly different uh, for your feet than you do for the rest of your body. Okay. I mean, once you, are, once you are keeping good general hygiene, you are yeah. bathing twice a day, or is it, even if it's once a day, you are, you, know, you are making sure that if you are, you are, not, you are not sleeping in a dirty state, mm -hmm. you know, because that, that will block the pores and cause a lot, a lot of other issues. You know, so if you are keeping good general hygiene, yeah. the feet are also taking, taking care of. The challenge with the, with the feet is that because we, it's always enclosed in something, we need to just make sure that it's dry. Okay. You know, so keep your feet as dry as possible. And so, if you are going to, if, if you if you have not, if you don't have a chronic issue with foot rot, mm. you, you you don't necessarily have to do anything special. Okay. There's, however, a category of people who need to pay close attention to their feet, and I've already mentioned them. That's Those are the diabetics. Yeah, yeah. Now, a diabetic should actually inspect his or her foot every single day. Wow. Yes. Because, and, and this is because, like I said, if the diabetes, one complication of diabetes is that the, the nerve, nerve endings, endings are, dead. yes. Yeah. And so if you are waiting to feel pain before you look at your foot, it might be too late. So you should so physically take physically a look at Physically take it. a look at your foot yeah. every single day. In okay. fact, morning and evening. Mm. Because, and and it, will, it will shock you that, I mean, I have had patients who actually had, the, he had had a nail in the leg for a two days without noticing it. Wow. So that is how serious. It's really bad. It is bad, and wow. uh, and, and sadly, this patient mm. actually lost that foot. Mm. You know, because the the nail, because she kept walking on that on the nail, it actually went through the bone. Mm. You know, and so and with the level of infection she came with, which had now affected the bone, there was yeah. nothing we could do about it. You had to to, to save her. We had mm. to cut off that leg. Yeah. You know, and so somebody, if wow. if if you cannot do that inspection yourself, mm. somebody needs to take it up and actually inspect that foot every single day. Mm. to make sure that he that the, the the patient has not injured himself or herself unknowingly mm. you know and so and so that's that's the thing yeah um, so the diabetics need to take particular attention to their their feet very, yeah. very we're important. looking at certain situations here can you talk us through what are some of these these images that we're seeing okay so the first one you, you saw where the nail the nail um, was looking weird that is, um, it's not, it's not foot rot per se, but it happens to a lot, a lot of people. As mm. you are cutting your nail, you may actually chip, you may actually This one you're puncture, talking about. Yes, you may actually mm. puncture um, the, 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 what's it called? The area around the nail bed. Okay. And that can get infected. Okay. And if you don't treat it well, because again, the foot keeps get, be being enclosed. If you don't treat it well, the fungi can gain access mm. to that cut on your, on your toe. Yeah. You know, same thing can, can happen on, on your, on your fingers as well. But at least because you are looking at the finger mm. it gets more attention but the feet are enclosed and usually yeah. get forgotten yeah. and can become very very bad you know so we don't want that to happen and you know it can actually cause your entire nail bed to to mm. To right. yes, to to literally yeah. as, as you put it, and the nail the nail would come off. You know this here we are seeing we are seeing um, infection between the the the, the, the in the web the yeah. toe, the webs of the toes. Yes, very very common as well because again those sides are always approximated. Well, I mean they are always closed Too up. Close. Yeah. So things might be happening inside there that you are not aware of. Mm. And if you sometimes if you actually open it open your toe your toe nails I mm. mean your toes and you 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 pass your finger through there and you actually sniff it you notice that it smells yeah. very very bad. Okay. So when you are taking a shower, you, you should for clean it, yes, exactly area. clean the web spaces as well. Okay. And, and especially this person I'm seeing looks like an elderly person. Yeah. It's very common in the elderly as well because um, the, their skin is already lax. It's mm. kind of loose, so yeah. it falls on itself, okay. and a lot of things can happen in there. Mm. And people who are also overweight mm. also ha can have because fungi of the skin because of the skin flow folds. Uh, folds. Yeah. And in these people, you can actually have similar vir um, um, fungi growing even on their 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 love handles. Mm. Anywhere there's a skin fold, if you don't treat it well, you can have um, fungi growing. For wow. women, especially women who are well endowed in terms mm. of their their breast, yeah. they can actually have fungi underneath growing underneath the, the breast. Wow. And so. Any 
any place where there's a skin fold in the mm. armpit, in the groin, in the uh, the scrotum, yeah. you can have fungi growing. So it, it, that's why I, I said that as for the fungi, they're all around us. It is up to you to create the environment for yeah. them to flourish. Yeah, so we are seeing this is a bit more extensive because it's affecting all the nails, yeah. you know, so definitely, definitely needs to be attended to. Mm. <laughs> wow. So dusting powder. Well, it's it, very, very important. Very important. We, and, and, and we thought it was just for children. <laughs> and we were playing around with the whole dusting powder. Idea. Yeah, so I mentioned that powder helps absorb moisture. So once you, you, you put the powder um, over, over there, it can help you to, to absorb any mm. moisture, that's any excess moisture that we don't want in that space. You know, so it doesn't have to be dusting powder alone. Any powder can actually, can actually help. Of course, not, not the beautifying for powder. But <laughs> <laughs> not face powder. Not face powder. Uh, <laughs> but, but just as a a matter of curiosity, what's in dusting powder anyway? Because it kind of like it feels it feels different from regular powder. Well, it's got talc in it, and okay. I, I think that's what that's what makes the you know the reason why dusting powder used to work so much was because um, when the weather is hot mm. and then you just finish that's bathing a cooling exactly, yeah. and, and 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 when there was doom, so dusting powder came by because yeah. it helped you to cool down. Yeah. It, it was very fair. I, I even got one, and you know, you just put it around <laughs> and go and sit outside, and yeah, yeah, it's and, very nice. Yeah, and when the, the breeze passes over you, it, it, it settles all your all your problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> oh fantastic well well thank you very much i mean this has been very enlightening um i think it's one of the challenges that it's easy to ignore like you said but um it can create all kinds of major major issues you know and um, issues, yeah. yeah um so those especially those of you who have challenges with diabetes or you know people who are who are diabetic um it's a very very important um issue to you know, keep on top of. Otherwise, um, it could turn into something that is much, that could could have easily been avoided. All right. So we've been speaking with uh, Dr. Kelvin Owusu. We'll take a short break. We'll be right.